Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic Heroes here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be talking about my Season of the Chosen Level Up Fast Guide. And in this video we'll be covering all of the basic strategy, all of the powerful and pinnacle reward locations as kind of like a checklist and general tips to maximize your efficiency either because you want to get to the highest level as fast as possible or you want to use your time as efficiently as possible as I know a lot of you guys don't have a lot of time to play the game. And as a disclaimer, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about in this video is going to be very similar as my last one at the start of Beyond Light. A lot of this stuff is very similar. The methodology is obviously exactly the same with some minor differences in some powerful rewards being removed, some new ones being added, and some new things that I have learned along the way. But for the most part, if you know how to do it last season, you're going to know how to do it this season. However, a lot of people are missing out on a lot of really cool opportunities. For example, the comp grind that not a lot of people are doing that's really powerful. And we'll be talking about everything I know about this stuff in this video. And throughout this video, we'll be seeing pictures of a document that I've created that is fully public for you guys to use that I've created for this video that talks about a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking about in this video. So if you like a text-based document instead, find a link in the description down below to my Discord server, and on that there's going to be a channel called Hashtag Spreadsheets Docs, where I have all my spreadsheets and all my docs for the things that I make. And right before I get started, I just wanted to mention that I actually have a giveaway going on right now of an Astro A10 headset and a Blue Yeti microphone. If you'd like to enter that, check a link in the description down below for details on how to enter. And if you didn't know, I use Astro and Blue products literally every single day. I am talking to you in a Blue Spark microphone, and I use an Astro A40 and A50 on a daily basis. They're really good products, and I would recommend you check them out with or without my code. Moving on to the main section of the video, first and foremost, I wanted to talk about some very basic info and basic strategy. If you're not interested in this section, just skip to the time on screen right now where I'll be talking about the different powerful and pinnacle reward locations. However, new players to veteran players, there's going to be a lot of stuff here that you may not know about that you could really help you out. First thing to know is that the minimum power for all gear now starts at 1100 power no matter what. Everything in your vault, everything in your equipment, literally everywhere will be 1100 power, even that of the sunset gear that's maxed out at 1050. So if you're a new player, you start at 1100. Next up, let's talk about the four sections of power level. The first section is 1100 to 1250. It's considered the soft cap, where literally everything in the game will help you give gear score. Anything from blue to pinnacle is going to be helpful. And it's called the soft cap because technically as you get past this, those blues and purples that are not powerful gear will actually still drag behind you and sometimes even help you. The next section, 1250 to 1300, is going to be the powerful cap. So tier 1, 2, 3, and pinnacle powerful drops will help your gear score. From 1300 to 1310, this is going to be the pinnacle cap, where only pinnacle drops will help you. And in case you were wondering, the best way to understand what things are pinnacle, what things are powerful, is going to be on the director. When you go ahead and look at the strikes, for example, you can see that it's going to be a powerful drop. So you look at the Nightfall 100k, you can see that it's a pinnacle drop. And of course, in my guide, you can see the full list of all the potential drops that I was able to find. And finally, when it comes to getting more power after 1310, that comes from the seasonal artifact. Basically, an inventory item that uses experience points to give you power indefinitely and that's gained from the first battlegrounds that you complete. Every single season this thing resets and every single season there's a new way to get it but you should be getting it as soon as possible as it's basically free power. And sometimes you need it to be able to do things like for example Grandmasters. Up next some important terminology when it comes to the different types of powerful gear tier 1, 2, 3 and the pinnacle plus 1s and pinnacle plus 2s are the 5 different kinds of powerful drops in the game and each is more powerful than the last. So they'll have a higher boost from your current average power gear. And although the director doesn't distinctly show you what is pinnacle plus ones or plus twos, from my experience and what I've learned on Bungie's news releases and twabs, I figured out what are plus ones and plus twos and put them in the document. For the most part, these strike, gambit, and crucible ones are going to be your plus ones, and most other things are going to be plus twos. And if you did not know, pinnacle plus ones will oftentimes have one higher than your average gear score, and plus twos will have two higher than your average gear score. So obviously, the plus twos are the better version. A very big and important thing that it seems nobody really remembers is that you do not need to have your highest level guns and armor equipped to get your new drops to be a higher level. You can have them literally anywhere on your account on your character, equipped, in your vault, on another character, in your postmaster. As long as it counts for your account, it counts for the next drop. Next up, I wanted to talk about two very important concepts and strategies, which are called level spiking and equalizing. The idea here is that you get a few of the strongest rewards first, and then you equalize your gear with lesser rewards. This may be random world drops, and this may be lesser powerful rewards. And then once you do that, you rinse and repeat, keep spiking, keep equalizing back and forth. 
An example would be getting maybe 3 to 4 pinnacle rewards, then equalizing with a certain number of tier 1 and 2s until it stops helping you. And as you guessed it, equalizing is whenever you have a significant difference in power levels where you have large spikes and you need to get lesser rewards to equalize those mountain ranges. And the last basic note that I want to talk about in this section is something that actually is the difference maker is most of the reason why you see people way ahead of others is gonna be the crucible grind. And in case you didn't know, every major rank up in Glory and Valor will reward you with a powerful reward. And considering you can continue to reset your Valor every single time you want to, as many times as you want to, this is infinite and obviously you can do both at the same time by playing competitive. So my recommendation to you is as soon as you get to the soft cap, go for 3-5 to five games in competitive Crucible and then you can get a ton of rank up rewards very quickly. Some people go all the way to 5400 or 5500 getting as much as they physically possibly can. Those are the people that are insanely good at the game that can do that every single time just easy and have a good team to do it with. I wouldn't personally recommend it, but it is possible. On top of the fact if you had a previous season with a very high glory rank, there is a catch -a mechanic to get you closer to a true skill and that makes it easier for people who are veterans that play every single season. Moving on, let's go ahead and get into the reward locations. First up, very briefly, I wanted to talk about the soft cap power leveling, as I know a lot of you guys may be wondering and maybe wanting to get to the 1250 soft cap as soon as possible. My personal recommendation would be to just start playing the storyline missions and the quests like the Beyond Light story missions as you need to finish a lot of these missions to unlock many of the mid and end game things. And again, you gain power from literally everything that drops, so you just have to put in the time and you'll be able to get that stuff. However, if you still feel compelled to power level and because you feel under leveled for the activities you're doing, I would personally recommend the playlist activities. So stuff like Crucible, Gambit, or Strikes. My personal pick being Gambit is it takes around five to seven minutes and you usually get around four to six drops every time you complete it. And with so many people trying to go for the Gilded Dredge and Title, using Lament usually games and pretty quickly. Up next, the meat and potatoes of this video, probably what a lot of you are here to see, are all the powerful and pinnacle reward locations. All of these things are very important as they help you get from 1250 to 1310. And honestly, there are a lot of powerful, pinnacle, and non-repeatable power powerful rewards in Destiny 2 that change seasonally. From what I've counted, there are 61 potential rewards, 61 plus that is, considering there are certain things that can be done infinitely, that you could possibly do. First up, for the Vanguard side of things, obviously we have the new Battlegrounds, where you can get a powerful reward, Tier 1, 2, and 3, either from 3 wins, 6 wins, and 9 wins, and obviously the subsequent ones don't show up until you do the previous ones. Everything else is pretty much the same in Vanguard. For the Crucible side of things, most things are the same, with one major addition, is that we now have a new vendor reward. As you level up in Valor, you go back to Shax and you can claim some of the things from him. And once you've claimed all of them, you reset your Valor and you can do it as many times as you want. And obviously the first rank has that powerful reward. Next up for the Infamy side of things, pretty much the same as Crucible. If you don't have tokens, obviously never had tokens for Infamy, and now we have that new vendor reward. As you rank up the Infamy, you get that vendor reward. For the tower challenges, nothing has changed. We still have all of those vendor challenges, the Hawthorne extra clan engrams, and obviously the Prophecy has a lot of powerful and pinnacle drops. The Europa stuff technically did not change since last season. However, as I got more of the Varric sabotages, I realized that there are more things to unlock more pinnacle drops, more powerful drops that you could be getting. So if you're looking for power, make sure you complete those Varric Sabotage. We're definitely going to be having Europa for quite a long time, and it's going to be powerful and pinnacle for a while, so get these things done. As for the miscellaneous section, which is mostly encompassed by getting Prime Engrams and Exotic Engrams, which all drop as powerful gear. Beyond that, we also have the Crow Weekly Challenge and the Hawkmoon Mission. Big note on the Hawkmoon Mission is if you need a kinetic weapon, it will guarantee a pinnacle plus two kinetic weapon, so you can kind of plan this out. And finally, technically, there was actually four powerfuls that got removed as part of the lure that are only part of Season of the Hunt. So those four drops from the lure stuff, they just got removed. And finally, for the non-repeatable powerful drops, firstly, you have the two ritual guns, things like Adored and Salvager Salvo, which you can technically do until the end of this current year. And you have the two exotic quests, the Hawkmoon and the Cloud Strike. Obviously, we might have some more exotic quests along this season. These are just the ones we know about. And in the last section, I wanted to talk about the miscellaneous notes, which are just kind of extra little tips that are not super necessary, but that really can help along the way. The first one is using three characters can help subsequent characters' power grind by giving them your powered-up guns, thus giving them a starting advantage in power level. So if you have a lot of time, start on your Titan, for example. Get the most that you can possibly get out of them, and then move on to your Hunter. Then your Hunter will have that 
that big power bonus and will technically go up past where your Titan was very quickly. And then you can obviously build his powerful on top of that. And then so on and so forth, and then the following week you start on your Warlock as you zigzag back and forth across the characters. This obviously takes a lot of time and not recommended if you don't have the time. Next tip is buy the Xur's available armor to give your other characters a starting armor power boost. So if I started on my Titan, I can obviously buy much higher power armor for my Hunter and my Warlock before they even started the DLC, which is very similar to the previous note, but it actually gives you an armor. Next note is that the artifact's power does not affect the drops that you get. Only the power of your average gear score is gonna affect the next drop. Next note is that Vendor's Engram power are no longer helpful for power leveling. We used to use these to help us equalize because certain vendors would have higher average power levels depending on the hour. Now they're currently 20 levels below and will never help you outside of just being what they are. Another big note is going to be that you should save your seasonal gun, armor, exotic engram, and legendary engram awards until you need them to equalize a specific slot. For example, if your leg armor is low, then claim one of these seasonal leg armor rewards. So you kind of just have to pay attention along the way and you can manually equalize exactly what you want when you want it. And while you're doing this, keep in mind that the seasonal rank 37 to 57 armors technically are high total stats, which are a great way to get high stat totals if you're newer to the game or you need a specific armor piece that just give you all of the armor pieces high stat total. And that is going to be pretty much the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you had any questions or concerns about the video. If there's something that you feel I was wrong about or something you think I need to add, please let me know so I can add it for next time. And also, let me know how you're enjoying the new season. Personally, I am a fan of Battlegrounds. It is obviously very simple, but it's a very high density mission, which I like it when there's a lot of enemies to shoot but obviously it will fade quite quickly because it's not too interesting in my opinion obviously and of course videos like this especially my spreadsheets and my documents would not be possible without my patrons on patreon Specifically, I want to give a big shout out to Medibudu, Mom Dash, Shadow Moon, Joe Smith, Monday, Nella Halpin, Steve Bachnowitz, Justin Ray, Raymond Showman, and you Panther for their support on Patreon. And if you want to make this list harder or win all of the different possible tier rewards, check the link in the description down below to my Patreon. But yeah, that's going to be the end of it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Unai Chronic, and I will see you guys on the next one.